I'm so excited to be here. How far so along are y'all? I'm eight months. Yeah, I'm like 37 weeks. So oh my goodness. goodness. Is this your first kid? Yes. Yeah, me too. What about you? Oh, it's just my second, so I'm still kind of new to all of this. I'm just oh, really yeah. nervous about all the things that could happen. I'm happy we're here. Yeah, me too. I've been reading about all these different like bacterial and viral infections, and it's getting me kind of freaked out. Oh my gosh. Oh, don't even get me started on bacterial infections. Okay, wait. Is this a dumb question? What is a bacterial infection? A bacterial infection is a harmful strain of bacteria, and it enters the body and multiplies and spreads. And the scary thing is they can actually reproduce on their own, unlike viruses. Oh my goodness. And some of them actually destroy the body's ability to function correctly, while others produce toxins that attack the cells. There are some infections that are minor and some that are very life-threatening. Like what? What do you mean? Well, for example, strep throat is a bacterial infection which is relatively minor, but then there are also bacterial infections such as meningitis, which is very life-threatening. Yeah, I was nervous about all those different infections before you mentioned all that, but now I'm getting even more nervous. Um, I did a couple, like, did a little bit of research on vaccines last night because I was looking at that whole vaccination debate, and it seems like they're a really good option to build immunity before you're actually infected by the pathogen. Okay, but what do you mean by vaccine? Well, vaccines develop immunity through basically imitating a specific pathogen. And Louis Pasteur, he actually made the first vaccine, and it was an attenuated virus. Um, attenuated viruses are basically weakened strands, so your body still recognizes them as being foreign, but it doesn't actually infect you or make you sick because it doesn't have all the components of the real pathogen. And all that. So how do you build up immunity? Well, um, it's honestly sounded pretty confusing, but I did a little bit of research and um, let's see. So the, when you get vaccinated, you produce T lymphocytes and antibodies, and these ultimately lead to long-term memory B and T cells and antibodies. So these will basically provide you with um, a defense mechanism for if you are actually exposed to that pathogen in the future. And they're really effective in helping you basically prevent actually getting like the symptoms of an illness because your body will make that like memory on how to defend itself against that pathogen without actually having to be infected and being sick and all that, which is why it's really important for you to vaccinate, vaccinate your kid and make sure you're like up to date on your vaccinations while you're pregnant. So there's oftentimes multiple vaccinations and this is important because it gives you an increased immunity and if you're if you have gotten a vaccination before, it often boosts those immunity levels back up to the optimal level to help fight against that pathogen. And vaccinations are really important because if you don't get them, then oftentimes you're just leaving, leaving your body to have to wait until it's exposed and infected before you'll be able to actually fight against it. Okay, wait, speaking of vaccines, have you guys gotten your tetanus shot yet? I think so. No, what's that? Oh my gosh, you need to get them. I heard about this disease the other week and it's called neonatal tetanus. Anyway, it can cause your child to die and they get it from having an infection in their umbilical cord. So it's usually more common in developing countries, but it happens from just the not having sterilized instruments when the doctor snips the umbilical cord. Um, so hopefully it wouldn't happen in America, but there's still a possibility that it could because it's all about sterilization. How do you make sure your doctor's being sterile here? Okay, well I did some research and I made a list of different ways that it can sterilize just so we make sure what questions to ask our doctor. Um, so usually it happens in developing countries because it's harder for them to sterilize. They just don't have the same kind of technology that we have here. Um, that being said, sterilization can be as easy as boiling water. Um, if you put an instrument in boiling water, then the water will diffuse into the cells and the heat can actually um, kill some of the more harmful cells. Um, but in America, there's a lot of ways to do it. So we can do, let's see, filtration, autoclaves, pasteurization, irradiation. And I think for most of the time, when they sterilize medical instruments, they use chemicals. Chemicals? Are those safe for the baby? I think that they are. I don't think that I would recommend putting chemicals directly on the baby, but this should be fine because you're just cleaning the instruments before you use them. Um, from the research that I did do, it said that they used 
um, ethylene oxide and beta propiolactone most commonly when they're sterilizing instruments. Um, so what I got from my research is that ethylene oxide is a gas and that basically ethylene oxide and beta propiolactone work together to um, target the cell walls and cell membranes of different cells and it just disrupts their function and it causes them um, not to be able to reproduce. So then you don't have to worry about having those cells in your body anymore. Um, but yeah, all of this talking about viruses is really making me worried. I hope that the doctors get here because I have so many questions. Me too. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. E and this is Dr. Coli. And we're, we specialize in prenatal care and all the like really scary things that can happen when you're pregnant. So we're here to answer any questions that you guys may have on how to prevent those things and basically what to expect. Well, we were actually just talking about neonatal tetanus and bacterial infections. Is there any more information you could give us? Um, the particular one you're asking about is Clostridium tetani and it is the cause of tetanus. Um, it enters in through an open wound or a cut, and it goes ahead and it releases toxins that compromise your central nervous system. Um, the bacteria itself, it's an anaerobic gram-positive bacteria that develops spores, um, and those spores actually thrive in areas where there's not a lot of oxygen. So necrotic tissue um, or umbilical cords that are rotting are really, um, it's a prime place for those spores of that clostridium tetani to go ahead and harvest. Um, once that bacteria gets in, it releases two toxins. Um, the toxins are tetanolacine, tetanolacine and tetanospasmin. And tetanolacine is not one that we really worry about, that's not pathogenic, but the other one, tetanospasmin, that is a main cause. Um, it's inactive polypeptide chain that is released, and it's released with its genes and its transcriptional regulators inside an intracellular plasmid. Um, so once it's released, it's inactive, but it gets cleaved with protease and it becomes its active form, which go ahead and dissipates throughout your body, and that's what's um, the main cause of tetanus. Um, the result of this usually happening is unsterilization, which is um, really prominent in developing countries and places that don't have advanced sterilization techniques, but another main way to avoid that is through immunizations, which... Yes, um, thankfully, um, tetanus can be completely prevented through immunization, and tetanus toxoid is the vaccine that protects newborns from tetanus. The vaccine is basically the detoxified version of the poison that causes the disease, and um, it's prepared by treating the tetanus toxin with formaldehyde so that the poison, or it's not really poison, but so that it becomes, it becomes non-toxic without losing its immunogenic property. So basically what that means is like, we take the poison from the bacteria and with formaldehyde we are able to form this detoxified version of it which can be administered through a shot and um, which immunizes pregnant women to prevent tetanus in newborns and basically this injection will stimulate the body to produce uh, protective antibodies against the tetanus toxin and these antibodies are able to pass through the placenta to the fetus providing the fetus protection from tetanus. So basically, I know we talked a little bit about this earlier, but your body can form these antibodies um, because even though the uh, injection is not poisonous or toxic or anything like that, your body still does see it as foreign. So it forms these antibodies so that if uh, the toxin, the actual toxic part was able to enter your body, it will attack it, therefore providing immunity. And Two doses of the vaccine is recommended, so I highly recommend that each of you ladies get this vaccine in order to prevent this happening to your child. Oh my gosh, that's terrifying. When can I make an appointment to get my vaccine?